What's good, Internet? It's Austin Walker. It's increasingly late. I almost broke this futon in this Airbnb we're staying at in the beautiful Los Angeles, California. Welcome to Strange Real. Welcome to Strange Real. We are going to talk about Microsoft. We went to uh, the Galen Center here in, yes, we did. in beautiful Los Angeles, California. They pay me each time I say that. Los Angeles... <laughs> Every time I say the beautiful Los Angeles, I get paid. There's 12 cents appears in my pocket. That doesn't happen. There's no collusion it's with Los 13 Angeles. Cents. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we went to the Galen Center this morning to play some Microsoft video games. We sure did. Which ones did we play? <laughs> I'm Austin Walker, Rob Zachney, Patrick Klepik. Waypoint has been doing stuff here on, uh, on, in LA about E3 all week. It's getting incredibly late. If you're watching us, that is why we are a little loopy. I think people are going to continue to watch you to see how far we'll go. How, how far will we go? Last time, the last video ended with me just reading a thread and then being like, all right, we're going to end this video now. Stick around. Microsoft. Let me tell you about this hippo attack. All right. Oh, no, we can't talk about that yet. We should talk about that tomorrow. We'll oh, talk more okay. about that. Because right. that's a Ubisoft joint. Because you I mean, Wait, you didn't sign shit? I did Ubisoft, but... I at, we could tell oh, he that. played Assassin's Creed. All right, well, let's Microsoft. talk about let's talk about Assassin's Creed at Microsoft. Wait, then. didn't you play Assassin's Creed? Yeah, we both did. But you're right. Let's just talk about it now then. Are Assassin's the Creed. Yeah, because there's a, de- a longer demo at Ubisoft. There's like a I 20 minute one at Microsoft. I didn't play that like either. 45 minute one at, at Ubisoft. Because we both just played the Ubisoft or the one that was at Microsoft. Yeah. Morning. All right, so let's talk about Assassin's Creed Origins, a game that takes place in Tomek, Egypt. Egypt. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And also. My the rumors I've heard that this game originated as a Prince of Persia game. Yeah, what? that's that's yeah, that's long standing that they, they were mm. going to build a open world I can see that Assassin's Creed, Prince of Persia. Rob, tell me about the sands of time. Did, well th- that game or No, the one <laughs> Yeah, no please. <laughs> tell me about <laughs> Tell me about Prince of Persia wanna, Sands of Time. Hear about Farah and uh, the the Vizier who got me, to no good. Tell me about Jafar. And his magic. No, that's, that's a different vizier. You're mixing up your your bad viziers. Wait, wait, wasn't the name of the vizier in the first Prince of Persia, Jafar? Jafar's the dude from Aladdin. No, but it? wasn't he also in the original Prince of Persia? Prince. Maybe of... In, maybe in Strange Real it is, but not <laughs> not here, not here in the Earth I inhabit. Jafar, Prince of Persia wiki. Don't get me on another wiki, Rob. You'll know I'll just read this wiki. Click it. I'm reading it. Jafar was the traitorous and power-mad Grand Vizier of the Sultan. He's the main antagonist in Prince of Persia and Prince of Persia 2, The Shadow and the Flame. This is the original one. That's what I said, the original. Oh. Tell me about Assassin's Creed Origins, Rob. Uh, There is, I mean, it feels a lot like... You know, a traditional Assassin's Creed game. You open Fuck on the does. outskirts of that's city. A, that's a bad sound. You ride the hell in. But, here, but here's where things got more entertaining for me. Uh, so you go in, immediately you do all that Assassin's Creed stuff. You go yeah, up to yeah. someone. Like, there's a lot of stuff happening on the street that you are immediately like just capable of inserting yourself into and be like, I don't think that's just. Wait, is uh, that like what? I got two side you quests. You did like, quest? Yeah, but like that was a... You, I don't want you to paint the picture that there's like shit ha- pops off in the street and then you're like rolling in uh, like Mr. Justice. I went up to an icon on a map and hit square to talk to a guy. Yeah, but I, was, I also took a left fork at the road when I came into the city and get, didn't go straight there. And I Don't saw look at me. Like, I didn't play this Dude, demo. there were bandits on horseback riding down oh, farmers. Okay. And I don't think it was, I'm not sure it was Mark. But okay, it was like, cool. And they were like fighting. It was cool. I didn't see that. But then there was the priest who was like beating up that kid. Yeah. And your dude is like that happens. Yeah, I imagine. Oh, I yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Is it the, the you collect to go collect some golden statues? I didn't finish that quest. I found one and then couldn't find the other. I was like, why am I swimming along the bottom of this? Okay, ocean? so there's there's a couple things. Uh, so you you get there and you got, it's it's really difficult to describe this game because it's just an Assassin's Creed game. Like it's yeah. It's, with a Ptolemaic Egypt, uh, you know, like which means like Hellenistic, semi-Roman. Right. Yeah, so that's actually my favorite thing about this game. Uh, you're you're saying for for people who are not familiar with this with this, you're saying what again? What type of Egypt is Ptolemaic it? Ptolemaic Egypt. Ptolemaic because Ptolemy is is there in Egypt, and Ptolemy is down from Greece, and is like, hey yo, this is Greece now. Actually, we're we're gonna take over Egypt, 
Uh, and there's like some tension there and some of that boils up in one of the side quests where there's like an Egyptian farmer who's like, my Greek neighbor just got kidnapped by some people. We should go save him probably. And I like that stuff. It's stuff that we actually talked about in the lead up to this event. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you want to see from a new Assassin's Creed set in Egypt? And I was like, oh, I'd love to see if they like, actually lean into like the Egypt Greek stuff. And they're doing that. Yeah. And also just, it's gorgeous to see the mix of Hellenistic architecture. These new buildings are in the classical Greek style next to the Egyptian style architecture that's just there. Um, I love that world. I like riding around on a horse in it already. But also then it's just an Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. And, you know, so you, you kind of know where a lot of these be. Like, it's kind of every story that starts, you kind of already know the ending. Uh, in, right. in some ways. Right. On the other hand, uh, it is kind of a vibrant, cool world. Like, um, oh, but now i got to get to the weirdness of the hawk. Okay. So. The weirdness of the hawk. The, weird, the weirdness of the hawk. Rob the original <laughs> story. It's an Assassin's Creed tie yeah. <laughs> Waypoint After Dark, Chapter 3. The weirdness, the weirdness of the hawk. The weirdness of the hawk. Okay, so you have to go get these statues because this, otherwise this kid is going to get the shit kicked out of him by this priest. So you you deduce that the statues must be on this boat, and then your hawk has a name, which I've forgotten, but it's basically like, Hawk, go find me those statues. Selma. Is it? Sadna? We're going to get this wrong, too. Princeton. Hawk. (laughs) Dag. Dag. Oh, what was Dag Hawk's name? I don't remember. Oh, the chat, no. chat, help us. Hashtag Dag. The Hawk's name is Hawks. Tom Clancy's Hawks. <laughs> oh, God. Hawks, go find these statues. Uh, anyway. Senna. So, and someone says Sobek. Sobek is in this game, but not the Zobek from... Correct. Wait, different did someone Sobek. say Senna? Senna is mm, right. That doesn't seem right. Doke. Doak. Anyway. Scraddle. <laughs> Squirtle. <laughs> Maybe Pokemon. All right, that's a bargo. Okay, so the hawk does not feel very hawk like. Uh huh. It like it's a drone. It it's is. a drone. It has a it camera. Can stop. It's a it has stationary. There's a button that can hover in place, and that's not, that's not how birds work. No, actually, that's how hawks work. work. What? You never seen a hawk just ride a thermal? Yeah, but you don't. You didn't do that in this game. You could. The thermals have to be. How did you just like go and then just like? How did you know there was a thermal right where it needed to be? All, Anywhere, at all times, all time, did you read? summons a thermal. Maybe it has a piece of the apple of Eden or whatever that summons a thermal. I don't know. I bet yeah. you there's some bullshit reason. It's yeah. a hawk that like responds to a pretty extensive list of commands. So I think we can assume the hawk is probably magical. And if it's just going to be like, all right, I'm here. What do you need? Rob's made here's beers my with camera. this hawk. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because sure, don't can, sure it can control air currents. What the hell? Why not? And so it just goes up there, and you go into drone cam mode. It's like, it seriously is very, uh, like... Well, it, n- not, only, not only are you uh, being able to, like, look around and scan, like, yeah. well, you're scanning. Like, you're getting information relayed to you about, like, targets and, and like, what no they're doing. And there's no scene of the hawk reporting back. Telepathic. It's very upsetting. Tele- telepathic connection with your hawk. I was kind of maybe sort of a lassie situation. Well, what's where, like, weird to me you just change a meaningful look. Mm, what's weird to me is during the loading screen, there's a button that's like your best friend, and it's like if you hit the down button, you can call your horse to you. And I was like, my best friend's my horse. My hawk and I are having we are like a deep connection. I let me decide. Don't who assume best, yeah, who I'm um, my allegiance is. You yeah. know each other too well, though. It's uh, like uh, you're kind of stuck with each other. Yeah. Whereas the horse. Is that there's still a mystery? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. You respect its space. Right. You respect yours. Yeah. The hawk, it, you're always up there in each other's business. Gotcha. Anyway, so you discovered this is where the the statues are, and this is where things took a weird turn for me. I go diving in the water yep. to go find the statues, and I'm swimming around there. Looks looks gorgeous. Everything. Blah. And then there's a crocodile floating in a giant like pool of its own blood. Oh, I did notice. And that. I'm like, that's weird. And so I keep swimming around, and I go find a was statue. A fucking statue in the crocodile? No, I couldn't find it. It was in a boat. Ugh. If you paid attention to your hawk, you'd have known that. <laughs> okay. Because it turns out the hawk also saw straight through the water to the shipwreck, <laughs> and it was like, "Yo, there's a statue down there." I guess anyway, it just didn't trigger for me. Point yeah. is, I get the statue, and uh, my character's like, uh, "Yes, the boy spoke the truth." And then I look up. And there's a giant hippopotamus like paddling around the water, and hippopotamus, very cute animal, not a nice animal, Ooh, really mean. Fuck animal. you up. 
yeah. hungry, hungry. And <laughs> that's when I realized, like, oh, it murdered the alligator. It mur- murdered the crocodile. And now it has like a taste for blood. <gasps> and it spots me and I spot it. And I start like paddling away furiously. Yeah. I get on this little skiff. And I'm like, Whew, I'll be safe. I'm in a vehicle. This hippo can't get me. The hippo starts like chomping at the skin. Oh, that sounds good. That's yeah. Good. It was it was kind of like terrifying. Like that sounds I way be... better than my experience with this game. So this gets weirder. So Strong I take <laughs> I take the skiff and I go to this uh, boat full of like Roman looking mercenaries to be honest, and I start like sneaking around there and. Um, and there's more statue treasure on the ship, and you got to kill the captain. And uh, you're, you're there for the statue for some reason. You also just like there's a side mission where it's like kill everybody. <laughs> on the ship. It's like it's basically like uh, the end of the usual no suspects. subtlety. Right, 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 the usual right. suspects. It's basically like just you know what? Fuck it. We're doing this. Just like we're clean slate. Did, did you, just real quick. Just I. I've, it's been a few games since I've caught up with the lore of the assassins. Did we ever find out canonically if Kaiser Sose was an assassin or a Templar? <laughs> Do we know? I, Okay. So in the in the last shot, we discovered uh, that he'd said he was he was said to assassin. Be I see. Then he stopped and started yeah. walking. Right. The greatest yeah. trip the, te- the trick the Templars ever pulled was convincing the world that yeah. they didn't exist. Uh, so I get there. I'm killing these dudes. I'm throwing dudes overboard because there's a lot of guards who like standing right by the guardrail, and you sort of sneak yeah. up and do the throw them off. And then I go and I'm like looting these statues. And then I look back down at the water. Yeah. And now the Are you ship been feeding this hippo. The, whole the time? ship is floating in like this cloud <laughs> of blood. Because the hippo has been going around to all these dudes I threw off the ship and just like ripping them in half. No. And so there's like so all these like good. Good corpses really good. all around the ship. That's really good. And this hippo was still there. And so I had to like Make a break for it off the ship back mm-hmm. to my skiff. Uh-huh. And the, the hippo was like, "Oh yeah, hell yeah, I've been waiting for you to come out of there." <laughs> I just, I've like, just been having snacks. Yeah, Yum. there's the meal. So I had to book it back to shore and we just like row that skiff straight on. The and then the hippo the stood beach. up and then it chased you on shore. This hippo was jaws for the revenge. Why am I not playing this game as the hippo? <laughs> that hippo sounds like the real assassin. I like. I mean that sincerely because I played this game for thirty minutes, and the thing that I I walked away with was like, I need to figure out a word that means not impactful, that doesn't that isn't impotent or flaccid because it felt that way. Right. I hate those words, but like, it wasn't very punchy. It wasn't very. There's no weight to anything. Like I I jumped off a roof to stab a guy the way I've always done in Assassin's Creed games. And normally in, in Assassin's Creed games, that moment of impact uh, has a weight to it. You feel like how heavy the body of Ezio is or Connor as they land on someone and like stab them in the fucking back of the neck. And I'm not saying I need that feeling to live. Well, I'm saying it helps. <laughs> uh, it helps to get it, by. But in general, there's this notion that there is that assassins are dangerous and that they're dangerous because they can be. They can be fatally violent in an instant. And to communicate when they need to. When they need to. And to communicate that feeling, there needs to be this combination of sound design and and uh, animation that produces the effect that at any moment, like uh, an immense impact can, can occur. Mm. And when I deliver on those things again and again, whether that was in outright combat or in uh, assassinations, it just was not there. It was this like very weak, like uh, it was like hitting someone with like a noodle and not at all with a hidden blade what would kill their lives. Right. Um, and that also held true again in the actual combat, which I think is different than it used to be. It's been so Different long. and or, I mean, we should point out like one of the failures of these yes. demos is yeah. that there is actually no setup for like the basic controls of playing this as like there's a, there's a, there's often a thing in front of you yeah, that yeah. like shows the controls, but that's not understanding the controls yeah. and so like yeah. doing like basic tasks like dodging like sh- there's not bow and arrows in this yep, one yep, like yep. It, those things were poorly communicated and made the demo it serviced the demo poorly yes because if they just spent 30 seconds setting you up for things like it's tough because like it's possible that for people who actually play this game right, like right. with the proper intro maybe that will be less of a hurdle um, I will say the one thing I, I, I it was a small detail that I thought uh 
was interesting was that when I was like swimming in like the main lake that's in that area, um, and you can you know grab someone else's boat, but the prompt says borrow, and right. We saw that, and, and it, it, they seem. I don't. We don't know the full context of like this character and his relationship with like the local society. But essentially, like it seems, like, by invoking the term "borrow," and then the way he, the person, the people stay on the ship. So like they don't. You don't throw, you don't them, throw off. them off the way. You don't. They you don't slash do. them yeah, in yeah, the neck yeah. and like I'm taking your boat. Yep. Like instead, they just kind of go like, "That's cool," and they sit down on like a pole and just hang out. And then their boat, they'll. Grab the boat again and leave. Like when you're done with it, it's a, like an interesting touch, and maybe suggest that like the character you're playing has like a connection to that world that maybe could be interesting. Right. But even just the verbiage of saying "borrow," I thought was like telling a about that character. Yes, and like totally. a fascinating touch as a, as as a game that has to mechanically allow you to grab whatever is around you. But the idea of trying to invoke that in a context is not just. Take whatever you want. Totally. Steal whatever you want just because. Yeah. We talked a lot about water here. I wonder if we have another game that had water in it. Sea of Thieves. Yeah. More fe- more animals in the water that will eat you. Sharks. Sharks are in there. Me and <laughs> McElroy shot a bunch of sharks together. That was pretty good. <laughs> From land. Yeah. Well, I got in that water too. I was like, I wonder if I can shoot underwater. And Griffin just stayed on the land and yeah. just pop, pop, pop. Wait, your gun works underwater? Yeah, I shot that shark to death underwater. A lot of things work underwater, including your instruments. Oh, do they? That's good. You can just I like bring that an game. All right, so like going into this, I'd seen that demo last year, and so seen and the demo this year, right? And in both cases, I was like, I want that game to be good, but these demos are not. They're bad. They're, they've been not good. They've been bad. They show like an interesting art style and yeah. and, 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 and and a promise. Yes, but like no understanding. Like, what is the actual? But the con- promise is fucking good. The promise is I'm gonna get on a boat with my buddies. I'm going to sail out where the sun is high. I'm going to look at a map, and the map is going to tell me where there's treasure. And because I'm a pirate, I care about treasure. <laughs> and even though you haven't given me any notion of what the structure of this game is or what I do with but treasure. I do have a shovel. I got a shovel. I'm going to dig it I'm up. I'm going to dig that treasure up. And maybe there'll be boat hijinks because boats, they got hijinks. There's anchors. There's sails. Natural hijinks on a boat. Mizzen masts and planks. Those are the four parts of a boat. And... And those things combine in various ways to create hijinks. And the surprise for me was they did that. Like, I actually played that game and through... The, my favorite thing about the game, and you and I noticed this right away after we talked about it, you know, after the demos were over. Right. They let us play that game and then no one was hand-holding us. No so one was saying... it's funny. Like, Assassin's Creed, like, yes. demo was serviced poorly by not giving you enough context Absolutely. to, like... No, it has a very complicated control scheme. Like you, every button does like nine different things. Yes. You need to. Are you holding under- it? Or are you yeah. tapping it? Or are you right? Where see if these like they had uh, specifically they had a, a developer who was um, you know you were wearing headsets that uh, you could hear them talk to you. You could talk to them and talk so to your you team. Could at, and to your team. So yes. you could ask them questions and talk to your team at the same time. Yep. But crucially, they allowed you to organically or not. Th- not to discover or not discover certain things. Elements of the game. And so, like so whole instance, mechanics. Like right. whole like like you could be sailing off doing weird shit that's totally. not part of what they technically set up for the demo and they wouldn't stop you. Right. And it was part of a it seems like a deliberate design decision where they want players to just kind of just Tinker around and yes. find their own fun. And if you ask, if you say, Oh, is there anything else I can there's a moment when, when we were all like, Okay, we're gonna sail, it's gonna take us a little while and so it's like, is there anything else we can do to like kill the time? And they're like, well, you have instruments. They're like, oh, word. And, like, <laughs> and I started playing. It's like, oh, is there only the one instrument? They're like, no, there's another one. Like, oh, word. And like, that's that was a really cool moment. Um, well, I, I had a moment where so you played with people yes. like you knew. Like I also this I game, played with the McElroy with 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 Griffin and Justin, another person I didn't know. Yeah, and this game greatly benefits uh, like playing with people who you have a rapport with, yes. like that you can yes. have some fun with. Yep. Like there's some goofiness with the way like the maps like. Like you can spin them around and like show someone a map and like you and just Justin some... would not fucking stop showing us his fucking map and you can just do weird shit with the yeah. game in the, in that respect. Um, and in in my group, which is all strangers, I believe one of them actually didn't speak English, which like made it tough sure. for them. Okay. Um, but uh, around like they let you play the game for like half an hour, which mm-hmm. like originally when we booked it was like really like half an hour, like that's a long time. Um, but it made total sense mm-hmm. in retrospect because you. Spend about ten minutes like kind of fucking around mm-hmm. and like figuring out what the, the dynamics of the group are. Yeah. And one thing that we did was like when we finally got the group talking to each other and we figured out our roles. Um, we were like, okay, we're heading to this. Uh, this uh, this we got this map. 
Um, one thing that's interesting is like you, there's like a world map that's in the lower deck of the ship, and that person can see like the direction of the ship and like where that places on the larger map context. Totally, and you're communicating to the other players to give them that information. So once we kind of get all that got all that going. Uh, We'd spent most of the demo screwing around. Like this was finally gonna be an island we were gonna get to, and like we're full speed ahead. We got the sails going, yep. and I was like, "Crash that motherfucking ship into that motherfucking island because we're taking it over." And we crash the ship, and it it hits. Like there's a loud oh, noise. Buddy. We all jump off. The ship grinds to a halt up against the island. We're like. We survived. Like, we're here. Yeah. Now let's go find that treasure. We fought some skeletons. And you do that. There's a, the map says, like, okay, you're going to go find the... It's a rhyme, but it's, like, all oh, the, the... On the southern side of the island, there be... Well, so there are some like that where they're, they're a puzzle, and then there are some where it's just X marks the spot. Oh, and I, didn't, then, I then, didn't get to do any of those. Yeah, so we want ours okay. was X marks the spot, so it was just... You look at the map, and then you look at the geography, and, like, try and put it together, and just start digging around. Right. Um, and so we, we did that, fought some skeletons, ran around, we were laughing... Uh, and then we're like, we got the treasure. All right, let's go back to the ship. And we're like, well, this island's kind of big. Like, where's the ship? Mm-hmm. So we're like running around the coast. Like, uh-huh. ha, can't seem to find our ship. And uh, the, the, the 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 developer was like, oh, we'll look in the sky. And we looked at the sky, and there was uh, like like some pink smoke. We're like, yeah. oh, cool. Like, the game like puts something in the atmosphere to like, just uh-huh. give you like a visual indicator like where your ship is. Mm-hmm. And like we get over the like the hill. They're arriving. We're like, ship, 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 treasure, 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 pirates, pirates, pirates. No, that ship's just gone. It's just gone. Uh, and she's like, oh, yeah, like, you fucked up your ship. It sank. Leave the treasure. <laughs> and, like, yeah. There's a mermaid who then, like, spawns you into, into the ship. ship. But, but it, was, it was just, like, a fun like, discovery yes. of, like, I didn't, I, know, I didn't even know the ship could sink. We had a fun discovery in a similar case. So we pull up to the, to the fucking island. You're like, angry. Yeah, I am. We pull up to the island. And I go, I'm going to drop the anchor and it's going to be safe. I'm going to leave it here. We're going to swim in. I don't mm-hmm. want to ruin my precious boat. Mm-hmm. The sweet poison. The nice HMS sweet, sweet poison. Big boat. Big boat. Uh, and swim ashore. And we fought the, the pirate skeletons. Yep. And we shot the sharks. What were between me and my, my gold. And we solved the riddle about going into the gravestone with the ropes on it. And then walking eight paces. There's a thing where if you have out your compass... And you hold down the right trigger. When you walk, it walks one pace at a time. That is so it, good. It's so good. You get like a pulse. You get like a pulse of the the vibration. Oh. It's like oh, eight paces high. And so you did that, and we did that, and we get the treasure chest, and then we we heroically walk across the top of this mountain and come down to look into the cove where our boat should be. And what do I see? Smoke. I parked that boat, Justin. I parked it. It was safe. But you wanted to point it so that you could climb into a cannon and shoot yourself ashore. And in raising the anchor and trying to turn the boat, you destroyed my precious baby. You destroyed it. Couldn't keep that treasure. I we had to we swam anyway. out to that mermaid and she said, nice treasure. You want your boat back? And we you said yes. We said yes. I have a couple questions uh-huh. yeah. uh, from that story. Uh-huh. One... Did the shooting oneself out of a cannon plan work? You know, I didn't bother to ask. Okay. I couldn't see through the rage. Okay. Well, I would have. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, look, if somebody's got a point, if somebody's got a point, a perfectly good bow. Right. Was it I worth it? To, yeah, exactly. Was like, it worth was it? Was it cool? Like, did you get shot out of a I cannon? think it did work. I yeah. believe it worked. <laughs> there's, there's footage out there yeah. of them playing uh, from, from their raw footage. Maybe you could see Justin appear. And if it did, yeah. you could have shot him out of a cannon when you got your boat back, True. too. Because then you could have punished him. I could be like, hey. So another thing that happened that I loved was like, another thing about this game that's just great is the water physics are really good. Yeah. And the sailing is really fun. I was impressed by that. That sailing of like, you turn the, the sails to catch the... Well, and it's, it's got kind of well, that so um, so there's like like two things, flower like, thing where you see the air current yes, moving. Yes, yes. So like, you actually need to manipulate your sails and like... Like, and sometimes you're against the wind. Sometimes yeah. you're with the wind. And so sometimes you're going to go slow. And sometimes you're going to go exactly. fast. And then also, if you... Uh, you this the is the person driving the ship, if the wind... If the, the, the sails aren't in a certain direction, they can't they see can't what's see in front shit. of them. So they need... You need someone underneath the deck yes, who, is on saying, the map. who is looking at the world map who is saying, like, here's generally yeah. the direction we're heading. Like, oh, you need to go more north, north, right. east. So like we, and, and there's, there's someone else who's in the front saying, like, Yo, there's a there's a rock. There's a rock. Move. Go to right. the left. So that's my favorite thing is 
so at the top of the game, it's just like, well, you have maps. One of the first things that, they, that the like, people who were running the demos said were like, oh, you have three maps. And like one of them was just like the the thing that says like oh here is the your solve my riddles three or whatever and the other two were just yeah. treasure maps, and that's all they say. And like well what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? And the riddle one says like go oh, go to Wanderer's Cove or whatever. Yeah. But the other two which is like I guess we go to the we find we go to the second level of the ship the middle deck and look at the big map and try to match the map of the island yep. with the map of the of the area. But then that map doesn't have all of the geographical features. It only has islands marked. So you end up having this like great three-person team thing of like one person's looking at the main big map, one person's driving, and then one person's actually on the lookout for things like other ships yep. or, or rocks that you might crash into, and that was dangerous. And there was a point at which the the weather was getting rough and the seas were getting really like the, the yeah, ocean storm, storms, storms, storms were rolling in, in yeah. and we didn't notice that there were two big like hmm. rocks ahead, hmm. and we were like last second I was like drop an anchor, and I dropped the anchor. Um, oh no! You know what? At that the point, Griffin break. Griffin was on the on the the head of the what's the, yeah, the so mast head, is... and he was trying to see where we should go, and he fell off. And I was like, "We gotta stop! Drop anchor! Drop anchor!" And the boat drifted. The boat drifted, Patrick. It went like, and like tore up the boat. And suddenly, like we were taking on water because the boat was not meant. Yeah, you have to patch. The we boat. had to patch the boat. We had to get the buckets out and start emptying the boat. We, Griffin had to outrun sharks to get back onto the boat. And that was like that felt really that's that's boat those high those jinx. sequences high were like I, I I I continue to have worries over like how does that fit into a larger structure? Yeah, me too. Like, w- how do they extend those moments? And like, I had that conversation with a couple of devs there, and, and they, they seem were all they, like cagey. And they and that game is early or spring twenty eighteen. I bet that gets pushed, which could be summer, or could be fall, or 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 I could see it coming out as Xbox early access. Xbox preview. That would program. be interesting. So I believe that there's a closed beta that's behind NDA yes. right now. Yes. Uh, but I could imagine that coming out in spring. And it's in... like, I was talking to one of the developers and they said like, it's, they uh, they said they had, tr- they uh, had trouble wondering if they were actually going to call it a beta because the video game industry has destroyed the term beta. Right. Right. In which a beta is actually just like a pre-order preview, early preview, access yeah, yeah, that maybe yeah. they do some balance changes at the very end. Yeah. Whereas like what they're doing right now with that game is like a true beta. Like they're yeah, looking yeah. at like what are players doing? Right. Like right. What, what? how can we build around that? Yeah. And so it makes me think maybe they're still figuring out like what this game is yeah. and then they'll build on top but of But again, that. this is one of those situations where it's like I want to play this game with everybody in this room. Like yes. I want to like get a boat together I want to have a pirate clan. Like, I don't know if that's what this game even is. Right. I don't know what we like. There's this one map. I hear there's some different biomes on that map. I right. guess. I guess like I, I don't know what we do with treasure yet. Theoretically, one day you'll buy new equipment or new costumes or something. But but at least I like this demo can convince me on the that core loop. I understand the promise. I can yes. see why Rare wanted to make this game. Totally. Like so there was some totally. game jam experiment and they did this. They're like. We there's something so, here. there's something there's here. something here and there is something there yes whether they it turns into what we want it to be I don't know totally but that demo was like okay like, yes they have not they have poorly pitched <sighs> this game yeah. or maybe it's hard to pitch I don't totally. know but like the demo like actually playing it was like all right yes I'm into right. sea of thieves couple more things yes crackdown three B- better than the trailer okay that's good to hear uh, specifically what's interesting um, is the idea that uh, you get a double jump yep. and an air dash. Mm. Um, the idea of additional mobility in that game is good. Yeah. Like, especially as your agility um, increases and you're collecting orbs. The combat's fine, you know, as the combat has been fine in those, you know, it's just kind of lock on shoot, lock on shoot, yeah, lock on yeah. shoot. Um, the, the, all that I was playing was a short 10 minute truncated uh, skills for kills where you're just like doing different things and your abilities. Are, it's like a very simple thing but it, right. it looks better than that trailer suggested I don't know what that means for like the broader game the destructibility stuff appears to be locked into multiplayer because it requires cloud stuff always on yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I still have concerns about the game but like it plays like Crackdown so okay. how- that mobility stuff was really appealing to me Yes. What I'll say. Because also, it was a I, bummer. Like the, uh, the the demo they had was a pretty tightly contained city. Ah, uh, you didn't and, get a and, sense of like. Scale. And it was like early agility How stuff, so like I wasn't you, being. Oh. It was like only up to six, so like, uh, or level six, and so oh. I just I wasn't doing like the huge ass jumps mm-hmm. that you 
that you want love. to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the double jump to me is great because there's so many times. Like, sorry, we revisited Crackdown recently because we did the guide to games on yeah. the first one, and there were when playing it all these times I'd forgotten about. We're like, all right, gonna run and make that jump, and like, nope, you missed it. You you just oh, you fool, you terrible. You're all the way down, all the way down, and then I not only did I not make the jump, now I have to go back up. To the launch mm-hmm. point that I originally to try had, it again. Try it again, and so even to have it have to be like, "Oh, I missed. I'm going to double back." Would be great, you know. Just a little bit of like course correction, yes. and it gives yes. you it gives you a lot that we're like, totally. "I'll I'll be like aiming for one building, like, oh, I'm not going to make it, yep. but I'll air dash to the left and like land, and like I can recalculate yep. what I'm going to yep. do for the next move, and that could be really interesting. Totally. Like again. They, Who knows? Showing surprisingly, you're going to see more of that game. I am this supposed week. to see more of that game. This so week. I'm curious we'll what see. that angle is, Me but I, I, I hope it's structure. I want to know what that game structure is. I yes. want to know: Am I going after the leaders of these gangs again? Like, what's happening? I also want to know what's up with the cloud and building destruction. Yes. Terry Crews told me, I'm not dropping bombs, I'm dropping buildings. But apparently I'm only doing that in multiplayer. Which, maybe that's still great. Could be. And I'm hoping that's what you'll actually is the see. Multi- me too. I want to know if the multiplayer is... It better not just be like Deathmatch. I hope it's not Deathmatch. I hope it's not just It was like, like some co-op campaign. Zone. Like it's like own thing. We'll see. But... I want to drop some buildings. Yeah. Terry Crews promised me. Yeah. Uh, we also uh, briefly played... Um, this game Ashen, which, yeah, which is, is Annapurna. Uh, yeah, Annapurna, which is, you know, in, to be reductive, Indie Souls. Um, <laughs> Very uh, reductive, but... But it's but, not inaccurate. Um, yeah. Uh, it was a... I, we're going to check out... I want to check out that I game again. That for sure, also. Because it was a demo that uh, played poorly because I think we didn't understand... When I played, I didn't quite understand what was going on. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm well-versed in the Souls design. I feel like, if anyone, I should have been able to play that and like know what's and still going on. Was like, uh, and I was still like deeply yeah. confused. And from what I understand... Maybe that those demos should have had people pointing those yeah, things out. So yeah. we'll see. I'm gonna. I want to check it out again because I I liked some of the ideas they were playing with. Mm-hmm. For example, when you use a, a health item, like it re- temporarily reduces your stamina. Ooh. And so the idea is like, okay, Very if you want more health, reward. then yep. you're going to be screwing with your ability to actually like fight back. Totally. Um, and so ideas like that are interesting. Yeah. I'm always up for another souls alike. Uh, <laughs> just th- that the demo it just p- demoed poorly yeah totally uh anything else oh we saw like the xbox one x experience where they showed us gears of war 4 in 4k and, and if they, you hadn't told me it was 4k either, it would not have known uh they showed us forza which is a really good looking yes. driving game yes. you played that in like yeah. a sit down yeah in the ridiculous how like, was that uh it was one of the most intense and borderline scary like racing experiences I've ever had. It's like a had. big sit down thing. Did the thing move? Yeah, it's an actuated chair. It's like hydraulically powered so cool. that all the feedback is from the from the game is coming through the seat as well. So things pitching on its yeah. side and like leaning and uh, it was like actually violent. Um, like I bet you played Dance of Assassin's Creed. I mean, I I wish I'd gone back twice. Like it was, <laughs> I wish I just kept, I, I like I wish I could live in that Forza demo. Yeah. Um, you know, so watch. I got I got a chance to watch a lot of people play it. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks amazing, but racing games look amazing now. Yeah. Like I saw people racing in the rain at the Nurburgring, and it looked fantastic. Like the weather effects were great. Yeah. But you and I have played Project Cars. That game was great. Gorgeous looking game. Yep. So I yeah uh, so the thing that but so the, the demo that they showed us was a daytime race yeah and it was in Dubai and the geometry of the rocks was based on photo photo look good photomet- some sort of special thing good they, looking rocks. they got some good looking rocks the rocks look good and the cars look like video game cars to me. And I think I'm hitting this point with driving games. Yeah, there's a lot of dimension returns. Where like, they looked good like five years right. ago. And they still look good. They still good. look good, but they look like good ass video game cars. Like it's just a sheen to all of them. They're so that sheen is so bright. Yeah. And I just I live in a world and not on a racetrack. And maybe if I lived on the racetrack, I'd see cars that were supremely like taken well care of where they're always they do have that sheen. And maybe I just don't see enough really pretty cars in my real life. All of my cars all burnt down, busted. I'm in I'm in Los Angeles. People gotta drive here right now. I'm in New York City. Like cars, they got bumped bumped up. 
I was in a car once with Joel. The door got all caved in. They caved in doors in 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 Forza. They have licenses. They're not allowed to cave in the doors. Um, but, but the world looks so good that there was like this disconnect for me that was like very strange. Well, we, we, the one thing that you and I both noticed when we were in that uh, that demo was that the most impressive one was probably Minecraft. Minecraft looks so good, and also made me feel like deeply sad and like melancholy. I love that game. Yeah, that song was really good, but the there was a clear difference between what the Minecraft with 4K stuff. The HDR, yes. the draw distance. It improves. made the game look meaningfully different. Right. And for I understand for uh, there are people in which yep. 4K is like meaningfully different. And I'm not saying that if I didn't if I saw them side by side, right. I would you go would like, like, oh yeah, oh, yeah 4K one. looks better, and that's great. But it like it doesn't do anything is, for me. Right. And so like, with Minecraft, this is the super graphics, super duper, super graphics, duper graphics, graphics pack. pack. Which also makes some meaningful aesthetic changes. So things yes. like foliage that moves in the wind, or the water looks good. The water looks like reflective and good as hell. They did a thing with um, uh, they like a very very slight outline on the blocks, so that they retain the notion that this is a world built of blocks, even though the foliage and all the blocks can be like a little a little blurrier right. around the edges. Right? Um, it looks it looks really fucking good, and. All of that stuff has all sorts of options on it. You could turn down. Yeah, it, it, the, it aesthetically makes even the on game, consoles. It aesthetically makes the game different in a way that I could see it being off-putting to yes, some people. To certain who people, totally. The, like the purest nature, yep. and then they just say, "Yo, just turn on the slides." Even, off. even on the console, and like that's you know, good on you. Yeah, but also like, just it was a good. I, I said this about uh, Save Decay yesterday. I like it when trailers represent the quiet moments that are actually in so many games. Yeah. Like and and that this trailer super sold that. I don't know, it's not like Minecraft is like a huge action y game anyway. Right, right, right. But right. it really understood how to present the tone of what Minecraft is. So that was that was great to see. I didn't actually get any hands on time with it. I played a lot of Minecraft. Yeah. I didn't need to sit in a big loud room and play Minecraft. Well I, I yeah and but I watched some people play it looked good. It I just honestly looked good. I played a lot of games in four K in yep. the the last like twenty four hours and I if you told me it was 1080, I know. I'm not, not my eyes. I'm sure my eyes difference. can tell the yes. difference, but my I maybe my memory can't. Maybe no. like from moment to moment, I'm not able to, to recall a 1080p image when I'm looking at a 4K one to make that differentiation. Like I'm not saying it's 3D. Like they're they're fundamentally different things. Like I don't think 4K is a gimmicky technology. No. But, but 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 like for me, it's gimmicks the wrong word. Yeah, it's just not. Like, at some point, I will have technology that has 4K by accident, right. and that'll be great, yep. but it's just not doing anything for me right now. Like, it's like, it's not a selling point. It's not like, oh, this game is meaningful. It doesn't It doesn't change the experience of playing the game, right? Like, part of the problem with, like, a new gaming console with new hardware is, like, how does this change how you... Well, totally. What is possible now that was not possible before? And there's nothing about 4K mm-hmm. that makes something possible... That wasn't possible before in a way that changes the play experience. Totally. I guess, right? Like, I'm not saying like better textures in a racing game, like important, cool, part yep. of the simulation. Like, totally. I get it. Yep. But I don't really play those games. Yeah. And in Gears of War. And I do, and, and I you can't do, really and you, yeah. Tell the <laughs> right, right. I'm like, it looks like it looks Project good. Cars did like, on my three years monitor. Ago. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's, yeah, it's it's uh, a tough sell, and I think, you know, maybe if and I guess this is the other part of it. This is kind of being explicitly marketed to you know high five fanatics with like ridiculous displays, pe- right? and people that do care. like I was talking to folks at the Microsoft showcase right. who like this is for me. Like I know what Dolby Atmos is. Like yeah. I know meaningfully. I like all my stuff is four K ready. Were good. Oh, they were good. We wanted to take. A, they gave just one they, speaker. They gave just us these one. pins. I don't even know where that. They pin someone went. stole mine. Someone stole your pin. I I'm pin convinced you. someone saw my name because my name is my gamer tag. Is your name? My name is my name. Famous Patrick Club, of course. Yes. Um, this just says "Wreck the Law" on it because that's my my oh, Xbox shit. gamer tag. I think. I typed it into the thing. I mean, unless the guy stole it. He said, like, hey, you can come pick it up afterwards. He did. I was not in the, was not the there. group. Maybe he's a big Patrick Klepik fan. Hey. I'm gonna put it, he's going to go home and put it on his Patrick I mean, my, pl- my plan otherwise was to take it and hide it in his home, so. <laughs> that was our plan. Yes. We did actually make the plan, like, what if we just left this here and Just, like, contributed to the house. Yeah, and someone three years from now will rent this house and be like, why does this say wreck the law? <laughs> Mears. <laughs> we'll see. 
Um, is that it? Da, da, da. We th- thought about playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. We thought about it, but, but it was just a PC version. Literally, it was just with a PC. an Xbox controller. It seems like a, a bad way to play that game. Yep. Like I'd rather play it with a controller, but I don't want to play that game with is, people with mouses. Is yeah, right. Is our hope really that we're gonna go to a Twitch booth and just hope that they yes. happen to have it set up? Yes. All right. Does Let's Twitch have a booth at E3? Yeah, they had a booth everywhere now, man. Do they have like I streaming think. stations yeah. at their booths? They do it packs. Mm. So well, public show. Right. That's what I'm saying. Maybe we could go in and be like, oh, we're we're uh, two we're influencers. And they're gonna be like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, like, how many people subscribe to your channel? And we're like, okay, we'll leave. I'm sorry. Have fun, everyone. Uh, do you even have emoji yet in your channel? No. Nope. Then you're not allowed in. <laughs> we have a nightbot. Who cares? Everyone's got a nightbot. Everyone's got a nightbot. Special. Yeah. Would well, you have funny commands? Yeah. Are they really funny? Okay, I'll leave. They're really funny. Danica sets up very good nightbot commands. Thank you, Danica. Uh, oh yeah, I'm trying to walk through my head the rest of that. Uh, oh yeah, walking uh, literally. Uh, Tacoma was there. I didn't play it because I just want to play that game. I'll just wait. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't cover it. Super Lucky's Super Super Lucky's Tale, which is a first party game. Like yeah, they, funding that game. Yeah. Which I didn't quite realize until we we talked, we talked to, to Spencer, Spencer. Right. There'll be an interview going up uh, tomorrow. Sometime soon. Yeah, 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 sometime soon. Uh, in which, uh, yeah, he explicitly mentioned it was first party, which I was like, oh, oh, huh, okay, I okay, mean, cool. Makes sense that Phil Spencer, huge yeah. character platform yeah. guy, that he would try and find a good well, to get behind it that way. And this time we get Danica on, on the pod because uh, she did play it and she like chatted about it for a couple minutes, and she said it was actually really good. That's what I heard. Well, like, I heard she, surprisingly this ain't no about ukulele it. situation. That is true. Uh, well, it, the, the, my told. worry was that if it's as simple as the the original Lucky's Tale was in VR, like VR was that game was fine, but it was like yeah. it's not, it was good. more of a gimmick. Yeah, um, yeah. and uh, so yeah. <sighs> anything left. Is that what the energy in my body? No, none of that. I got none of that. I don't think we're gonna get Ubisoft into. Nope. That. No. It's God. two in the morning. With a gun. We need to go. Couldn't. Whatever we missed, we'll get tomorrow. We got yeah. time. We got time tomorrow. So check in tomorrow for our thoughts on Ubisoft stuff, uh, and probably some more Sony thoughts tomorrow too, because we have some hands-on time with yes. Spider-Man, with Detroit Become I Human. Want, I think we want to see uh, Spider-Man and God of War tomorrow. Yeah. And, I, and today. I'm seeing Detroit Become Human and Knack Two. The second knack. Yep. Uh, we're all seeing a bunch of stuff over the next couple of days. And you know, I'm not entirely certain whether knack two is a goof that you guys are making up or if it's real. I'm sitting here. I'm like, I'll bring that to Mark this, Cerny. You... I'll ask Mark, Mark, the architect Cerny about that, sir. Me. I'm Austin Walker. You can find me on Twitter at Austin underscore Walker. Where can people find you, Patrick? This is the knackening. Patrick Kleprick on Twitter, Rob Zachney at Rob Zachney on Twitter. Find everything we do at twitter.com slash waypoint and at facebook.com slash waypoint vice. You're watching this probably either on twitch.tv slash waypoint or on youtube.com slash waypoint vice or on vice video, which is a platform that holds videos for us sometimes. Shout outs to everyone at vice video doing good goddamn work. Damn it. Uh, and also, you know what? Nack, <laughs> In this moment, I just want to briefly shout out our great support team. We have a bunch of people who are helping us do this here. Who are behind who the camera. Who stayed up with us. Who stayed up with us. Uh, who are watching us over there in the corner. Joel and Danica, our great producers. Uh, another producer who helped us shoot the... Uh, Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer interview earlier today. Uh, and also, Danielle and Mike and some great freelancers who are running the home game for us right now. Shout out to all of y'all. You're, you're, you're really making it work for us. No Minion Malco game at Sony's press conference. Where the no fuck dreams. Are dreams. Dreams, where you at? In I that. have dreams. We have dreams. I have dreams. It's called I'm looking, I am looking forward to my dreams. It's called Knack 2. It's my dream is Knack 2. God damn it. Complete the trilogy. I keep feeling like I'm forgetting They something. have to make a Knack 3. Ask him if it's a trilogy. I'll ask him if it's a trilogy. So is there a chance Knack is going to come with like a kaiju series? Because that's that's where I think things. He just gets good. bigger and bigger until Knack is all that's left. Add Knack to PlayStation Plus. More people need to know. People need to know the truth we, about we, Knack. We, we need to do a charity stream where we play Knack. We made this robot as cute what as we, we possibly could. What if we did a charity could. stream where we play Knack? Uh, yeah. What if we did? If you say it out loud, you have to do it. <laughs> that is how the internet works with us. It's true. We're gonna go to bed. 
Yep. Thanks to everybody. Shout out to Bowen for letting us use his track, Miss You, off the EP Pale Machine, which you'll only hear if you're listening to this as a podcast. <laughs> if you're not listening to this as a podcast, instead you're going to hear this song from Jingle Punks called Bass on Top. And I'm going to hit play on that one right now. Peace. Was good. That's good. We just, now we're just gonna banter. It's like faded out. He's gonna oh, turn back, it off. Back, 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 back. Like rare speech. Back, 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 I didn't stop. Oh, I did. I did. All right. Thank you.